Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have invited my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. You remain standing. I may have something upon your heart wanting God to do for you. Yes. 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 Need for someone else or for yourself. Oh. You like to be remembered in prayer. You go to the Lord. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, I don't know what we would do in this hour, Lord, if Thou hadst not sent us Thy word to light our pathway. Yes. For Lord, truly, there has <clears throat> never been an hour of such confusing confusion and bewilderment, Lord, and of such great deception. We do not, or, or we are not able, Father, this morning to corn a word in our vocabulary to, to, to express the deception of this hour by our great enemy, Satan. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're no match for him this morning, but through thee we are. And that's what we thank you for. We have no wisdom of our own, Lord. We have, uh, we have no talent, Father, that you can use. So, Lord, we're trusting in thy wisdom and thy Holy Spirit that will enable us, Father, to go through this hour of deception. Father, we have thy people before us here this morning that surely are in need. Many of us confess that we are poor in spirit. Lord, we're living in a time when we need to be filled with the Spirit. We need to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Heavenly Father, we bring these needs of this congregation to Thee, ever uplifted hands. Lord, Thou knowest the secret of every heart. I pray, O oh God, that You will abundantly bless each and every one that's here this morning. Heavenly Father, they may leave here with the Word of God burning within their heart. And Lord Jesus, that when you come, you might find a people that set on fire from the Word of God. Lord Jesus, may re you rebuke ever loudest in hope that's on the people this morning. Lord, ever be the spiritual laziness, God, and slothfulness, Father. We pray that the power of the Holy Ghost will bring this conviction this morning to every part. That they may, Lord Jesus, rise up from among the dead. Lord. Rise up out of those that are dead, Father. Press the battle to the gate of the enemy. Bless us this morning, Father, as we come to thy word. And may you give us, Lord, of thy inspiration. For, Lord, we have no education, no talent. Nothing that we can offer to thee, but, oh, God, we offer our person this morning. You speak to thy people, Father, in the way of simplicity of the gospel. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And maybe seated. I'd like for us to remember also, I pray and I said amen. I forgot to pray for Brother Pirelli. I don't see him here this morning over last night and uh, he's kind of caught the flu bug <laughs> and uh, he's very sick Thursday night but pressed his way out to service. He wanted to know that Brother George is not a well man and it's only by him saying in prayer and word that he came here to us out of a deathbed almost and uh, had not eaten hardly anything in over a year and he was just might near gone but just coming into the presence of the word my little study and talking to him about the revelation of the word picked him right up and he's been pressing on ever since so remember brother George in prayer today and pray and meditate God will strengthen and may be out to serve brother George has been a great strength to us here Amen. Wonderful to see men are dedicated to the Word of God and pray. He stays in his little house over there, always on his knees when you go in, or either in his tape or looking in his Bible. Amen. I wish everybody could be that way. Yes. Amen. It certainly would be pleasing to the Lord Jesus.
very happy to see Brother Paul Belmar with us, Brother Kerry. Always fills their heart when they come our way. We rejoice with them. With each one of you, I know, as you see them this morning. We're happy to have Brother Roses with us this morning, his boy. And we're just waiting for the great promise of God to be vindicated to us. Where our hearts are encouraged here in Connecticut. We're not discouraged. We're not oppressed or depressed or suppressed. <laughs> but we're pressing on Amen. to what God has promised us in this hour. Yes. This is, without a shadow of a doubt, the most glorious time to be living in that's Amen. ever been known in the Amen. history of mankind. Amen. And God has so blessed us to see to us that you and I are predestinated to be born in this hour. You're not here by chance. You are predestinated here to play a part. Now it's for you to find out which part you're playing. You're neither a believer this morning, a make-believer, or an unbeliever. Yes. So we can look right here in God's Word and find out this morning what part we're playing. <laughs> so I hope and wish with all of my heart that all of us are believers this morning. Yes. That we might, because God, that's the only thing that God can use to fulfill His Word through, and that is a believer. That's the only one that he can use to fulfill his promise through as a believer. And it's such a blessing to be able to be a believer. And uh, we thank God in this hour that we have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Holy Spirit has said to the church. And I know that he is able, as Brother Bruce was singing in a song, how we thank God for this ministry of song, my brother, songs roll up out of him like water from a rock. <laughs> and these songs rejoice our heart. It makes our heart happy because this is true. These songs that we, the Lord gives Brother Bruce is true. And uh, it does good to our heart. Uh, now, I was trying to think if I had anything else to say. Uh, our little group here has <laughs> rented a little apartment. It's very expensive, very elaborate. We found a need to have a little place like this because, there, especially in the summer, there's many visitors come and uh, I find that it's just impossible for my wife to continue on the way she's been going last year. And of course she'd be very, very resentful for me saying this. And uh, I thought much about it, and the brethren came to me some time ago, some of the brethren here, and asked if I would allow them to try to find an apartment. Well, the only thing that we knew of in this vicinity was over here near the lake, and it's 60 some dollars a week. Because it's very hard just to want to rent a place for a week. You have to pay very much because they have to keep it empty, you know. So, uh, we been able to find a little place, three rooms, it's very nice and clean, quiet. Of course it isn't uh, the Statler or the, or the Conrad Hilton Hotel, nothing like that, $45 a month. And I thought uh, even if we rented just for a week over here, the cheapest place I've been able to find is $60 a week. And some of the ministering brethren come in. They do not like to be in home. They like to be alone in prayer. And uh, if you're in a home, then you have the great temptation of talking all the time. And then you don't wait upon the van that doesn't wait upon the Lord for the message. Then they come to church confused. So we think the greatest, most important thing today is not fellowship with one another, but trying to find the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Amen. I think not being critical of fellowship because I love it as much as anybody, but I do believe that fellowship with one another, as we know it, just going sit down and talking day after day, is the biggest hindrance to the work of the Holy Spirit that I know of, one of the biggest hindrances, I'll say. Because as long as we're talking all the time, we cannot hear the still small voice of God. And when you become, you have no prayer life, you have no contact with Jesus Christ, 
You have no fellowship with him. You're not walking in his presence. So therefore, you're just an open target for the enemy. Amen. And he can use your tongue to say things that you shouldn't say. And I notice this is uh, worldwide. It's universal how that Satan can find many instruments to use in this hour because of men and women not fellowshipping with Jesus Christ. And I think that first, above all, that I had a prophecy given to me by the Lord a number of years ago, and I didn't quite understand it all then, neither did I feel the importance of it at that time. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said to me, because that my people have no time to fellowship with me, uh, they had, and I said, because my people have no time to read my word. They won't read my word. And then said they won't fellowship with me, but they have time. They have no time to fellowship with me. But they have time to fellowship with everybody else. said, so therefore they shall not understand what I'll bring upon them. And said, if it wasn't for my blood, that I'd destroy the whole world now. Now that was years ago before Brother Brown preached on the token. And uh, that always stayed with me. It always stayed with me. And then I told a brother, I said, Now, brother, I said, Brother Branham will go right off of the scene. And I said, People will be so confused. I said, Because they've not fellowship with Jesus Christ. Therefore, they'll have no revelation and they'll not understand what God is doing. And I see this very thing. It's come to pass. So that's why that I've preached here two and a half years to you. Don't be so concerned about uh, trying to find fellowship in the natural, but do everything you can in this hour to find fellowship with Jesus Christ. Because even when Brother Branham, after he spoke the word and stopped the great storm in Colorado, which I was there, and that was one of the greatest miracles that we've seen in this century that we live, that a man could speak words and stop a great storm that was supposed to dump many feet of snow in the mountains of Colorado, that a man could speak to a storm and stop it. That's tremendous to see the words of Jesus Christ being fulfilled. If you say unto this mountain, be thou removed, not doubt in your heart what you said, it should come to pass. And then what's so striking about that was not so much that the storm dispersed, but what sunk deep in my heart was the words that left me completely exhausted and tears for I don't know how long, was those simple words of simplicity by the voice of God himself, won't you walk with me? He was running down off of the mountain to tell his brethren all about what God had done. And there come a still, clear voice, God's own voice, audible voice, says, Brother Branham, won't you walk with me? Why not walk with me? Now, dearly beloved, I'm persuaded in this hour that all those that go into rapture are going to be men and women that are trained to walk along with the Lord Jesus. Now, whether or not you like what I'm saying, it's true anyway. Amen. It's true. And uh, you must learn to walk along with the Lord Jesus. You must learn to be still and be quiet. Listen for his voice to speak to you. The reason why that we cannot hear the still small voice of God today is because that we're taught too much. It's when the Bible said, be still and know that I'm God. Be still and be quiet. Study to be quiet. And we're living in an hour when there's such pressure that people are trying to find comfort with one another. You cannot find uh, so much comfort with one another, but the Holy Ghost is to be our comforter. How many say amen? amen. amen. Getting off quiet on <laughs> I see uh, how that the enemy is to travel around and meet different people, hear their conversation, hear that the things that they say, and now we holler about the coming of the Lord, and we're right up here now to rapture in times, but we, uh, what about growing in grace? What about overcoming these things? What about becoming more like the Lord Jesus? Yeah, yeah. There's no use as a man got up and talked about heaven uh, for about 15 minutes. And everybody just lukewarm as dead as can be. Well, that's uh, all vain. It's vain means empty, void, and useless. Worthless. Vain. That's what the word vain means. And that's why that 
if we are coming here this morning to assemble ourselves together and we're not growing in grace and striving to be like the Lord Jesus, yeah. you might as well stay home because it all is in vain. Yeah. Yeah. You say, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. But unless we live the life, it is all vain, useless, void, and worthless. And we become a stumbling stone and we'll be judged by Almighty God for being a stumbling stone to somebody else. So I tell you, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Yeah. Amen. Now, we have fell into the hands of a living God. Amen. <laughs> because God, we find out, is not in a little tomb or in a little manger, but we found out he's a mighty God of war. Amen. Uh, he's mighty to save. He's mighty in judgment. He's a God of battle. And we fell into the hands of a living God. Amen. So we can't. Where can we go? Where can we go? we got to go on. Amen. We can't. We can't. Amen. Stand still or back up. We got the only one way for us, and that's Paul. Amen. 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 Nobody wants mother don't want to go, stay there. Brother Amen. don't want to go, stay there. I'm going on. Amen. 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 Let the dead bury the dead. Yes. What's that to thee? Follow thou me. Yes. Yes. I always wonder about those words of Jesus Christ. I think it was Shirley's grandmother that asked, What does this mean? That's always bothered me. She said, Let the dead bury the dead. Little Methodist lady. Well, I said, that's a good question. What does that mean, let the dead bury the dead? I said, Mama, I said, supposing that Shirley's mother would die, or one of her family would die, or one of my family would die, and they wasn't concerned about what you hear me talking about, about the prophet of God, the word of God, Jesus Christ, the coming of revival, making heaven her home. And I said, they die, and they write and say, oh, come quickly. So-and-so just died. Well, if I was busy working for the Lord, and I did not have the time to go, then it would be more important for me to follow Jesus Christ and do his work than to come to that funeral and help bury that dead body. Amen. That was like that man that wanted to follow Jesus that you spoke of, said, Lord, now listen, I want to be your disciple. I want to, I, I want a part of this kingdom. I want to preach the gospel. I want to heal the sick. Now, Lord, <clears throat> now just one thing, it's holding me back. I want to go home and bury my father. See? I don't remember where his father or one of his relatives there. I think it was his father. And Jesus got, see, Jesus always gets right to you. He don't, he don't go way around. He gets right to your problem. Though you won't confess it, he gets right to the root of the trouble. And there was the root of the trouble that he really loved his family more than he would have loved God. Amen. And he said, uh, well, what's, uh, said, let the dead bury the dead. Said, now the rest of your family is not concerned about the kingdom of God. You let them bury your father. Because they're already dead anyway and they don't know. And uh, you come and follow me. It's too much for him, see. Now, what kind of love of God would that be? He don't want me to even go and bury my father. He started reasoning right away, guaranteed. Now, that, that couldn't be the Messiah now. Then he probably turned against the Messiah just because the way he answered that question. Well, now, that would be the love of God. Here's all my family there, and they're getting ready to bury my father. Why, that? he wouldn't have told me that, the real Messiah. He let me go and bury my father. See, well, that was the end of him. And so it's like us this morning. We could very well be like that man. We say so much. Listen, <clears throat> we are living in an hour when we, con we, we have a great confession. We have a great confession of our faith, but we don't have any possession. Yes. We are not able to possess the thing of which we talk about. Yes. And unless we get possession... It's all vain, void, and useless. Yes, amen. Now, I'd like to, <coughs> a little simple thought here this morning. I just kind of had this for a few weeks and it keeps coming to me, so I thought I would go ahead and preach it and get it out of the way. And uh, you'll open your Bibles to Exodus, the 20th. Uh, sixth chapter and the thirty-third verse. I'd like to just talk a little this morning on a resting place for the ark. 
a resting place for the ark. Verse uh, 33 of the 26th chapter. <coughs> Exodus 26, 26 33. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the attaches. Thou mayest bring in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony. And the veil shall divide unto you. testimony in the most holy place. Now, I'd like to read also, give you a little picture of what the ark looked like. 37 of Exodus, in the first verse, 37 and 1. And uh, Beth Elil made the ark of shittim wood. Two cubics and a half was the length of it, and a cubic and a half the breadth of it, and a cubic and a half the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. And he cast forth four rings of the gold to be set by the four corners of it. cubics and a half was the length thereof, and one and he made two chairs of gold beaten out of one piece, made he them on the two ends of the mercy seat, one chair on the end on this side, and another chair on the God gave to his church. And uh, to look at it in the natural, it didn't look like it was of much importance. There was nothing inside of this ark other than the two tablets of stone that God wrote upon that was given to Moses. But it was their covenant. But the great thing about the Ark of the Covenant was that it was a covenant that God gave the church that he would stand by. Amen. And the presence of the Lord God that created the heavens and the earth dwelt over this Ark on the mercy seat. Now notice that the mercy seat was over the Ark. Now, what has that got to do with you and I as believers today? The ark today is the Word. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament and the covenant of the Word today is to the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. That as God was in Christ, Christ is to be in the bride. Amen. And that all the promises that God made in the Bible is a covenant that they're yours. Amen. See? God is, the covenant today is with the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that Amen. covenant is in the Word. It's laid in the Word. Now, notice here in another scripture, is Numbers 10 and 29. 
Numbers 10 and 29. Moses said unto Hobad, the son of Regul, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are journeying into the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good, for the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest here how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of I. And it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will we do unto thee. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them, in the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp. And it came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee from thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. Notice here, that Israel, the church, she was never a church until she was called out. Amen. The church is called out. She was never a church. Israel became a church when she was called out of Egypt. Right? Amen. And today, we tap that over today. The bride of Jesus Christ was not a church until we were called out of the denomination. Amen. Church means called out. Amen. And we were not a church until we were called out of denomination. Now, the bride is the antitype of everything that God did in the natural with Israel. He is doing exactly in parallel, exactly now, Amen. in parallel with the bride today unless that you can understand the journey of the church of Israel, which is a shadow of the new church of the New Testament, unless you can understand that journey out of Egypt, and unless you can understand God's provided way to get the church out of there, you cannot understand what God is doing today. Amen. All right, now we see the church coming up out of Israel by Moses a prophet. And uh, they were searching for a resting place. They had no rest down in the denominations of Egypt. Amen. And they were looking for a resting place. Yes. Yes. Now we have an ark, which is the covenant that God gave them, and God's presence abode in this ark. And uh, we find out that the ark, had no resting place either. Every time that they were journeying on, the ark went up first and went forward by the priest. Then the church went up and went behind it. And everywhere the ark of the word went, the pillar of fire went with it. And uh, they was in search of a journey, a search of a resting place in their journey. They were journeying out of Egypt to a resting place. Amen. They were laboring and working, trying to find the rest of God. Amen. Every soul that's on the earth today is searching for a resting place. Amen. Brother, we've been uh, rolling around and journeying around in these denominations now for almost 2,000 years trying to find the kind of rest that God spoke of Amen. in the Bible. Amen. Brother, we tried to find rest in the Baptist church. We tried to find rest in the Methodist church. We tried to find rest in the Pentecostal church and Still we could not find rest for our souls. Amen. But there is a rest unto the people of God. Amen. A rest that, brother, you'll no more worry, you no more labor. You'll find rest for your soul How when you find you? rest that God's spoken of in the Bible. The ark of the covenant of the presence of God was trying to find a resting place. It had to journey to another, another day and sit down and journey here and sit down. 
no resting place for the ark. And as long, oh, this is compressed right there. As long as the ark could not find a resting place, neither could the people of God find a resting place. Amen. Amen. How that in something a minute. Amen. I like to get a little something fresh that I've never seen before. It kind of stimulates you. Now notice here that they were in a three days journey that they might find a place of rest, the Bible says. They were searching out a resting place and it was a three days journey. Brother and sister, I don't care what Pentecost said. I used to go in some of the churches and I used to hear, now we're going to have a popcorn testimony meeting. And the old sister get up the back and said, Thank the Lord, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, got a mind to go on. But you just pray for me. I don't know why the devil just beat me down. And I've been so backslid, but I'll feel hold me up in prayer. I just know I'm going to hold on. See, she's laboring right there. Yeah. There that woman claimed to have a rest in her soul. She was laboring all the time. Yeah. And another get up and answer, well, I don't know what's the matter with me. I, I thank the Lord, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and had to get an operation. But all said, I hope you pray for me. The devil's just tearing me up. And, uh, oh, I uh, just pray for me and I'll hold on. Ain't got no rest. Oh, oh, brother. They claimed to have a rest, but they didn't have it. But, brother, I believe in a three-day journey today that I believe God is going to find rest for the God. Amen. Brother, there's three steps to this journey, that if you're justified by believing the Word of God in this hour, you're sanctified by that Word of God today, and then you're glorified and rested when you find out what the real rest of God is today. There is a rest for the people of God that they no more have to labor anymore worrying about it, but they've entered into a rest where God is taking over and moving and working in them. Amen. That's the rest. And they were seeking out a rest for their souls. The ark was wanting to find a resting place. Israel was in the journey. Now if Israel had obeyed the word of the Lord that said that this land of rest that I'm going to give you, you'll no more be in bondage. You won't be bound out by all those things in that old evil nature that keeps holding you back from the Lord. You won't be bound anymore by that old denominations of Egypt, right? But you'll find a land filled with milk and honey, a beautiful land, a glorious land. And if they had only believed that and it went on, see, they would have entered into that land. It was just a little ways, just a three days journey to the promised land. Amen. And it's always just been a three days journey Amen. to the rest of God. Amen. But the trouble about it, the Ark of the Covenant was not leading the people. Amen. Yes. See, following around in denominations. You cannot have that rest of God unless you get behind the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Yeah. See? Now we know that God is perfected in three steps of the journey into this rest of God, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Of course, today when you say baptism of the Holy Ghost, then you want to break that down and explain it. Because people today, you cannot knock that thing out of their minds because they sit in Pentecost, some of us, for 10 or 20 years. And immediately when we think of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you think somebody get down speaking tongues and prophesying, hallelujah, I got it. Yeah. Brother, we're talking about God tabernacled in human flesh. Amen. 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 We're talking about the written word of God expressed and made flesh among you. Amen. When we talk of the baptism of the Holy Ghost today, we're not talking about some woman that jumped up and spoke in tongues like peas rolling down a dry cow, a dry cow hide. Amen. Is that right? Amen. We're talking about a place where God tabernacles Himself in character. Amen. We're talking about a human being yeah. that does the works of Jesus Christ. Amen. God that wanted His work done, He sent it unto His Son Jesus. Amen. Now Jesus is wanting His work done, and He wants to tabernacle Himself Amen. in human beings today. Amen. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. That is the rest for your soul. The Canaan's land was only a three days journey from Egypt. But because of backbiting, complaining, and doubt, huh, they had to 
journey in the wilderness, wander around. They could not grow in grave. They could not find no rest for their souls. They got up out of one spot and they moved over to another spot. Then they moved over to that spot and then they moved over to this spot. And then they come around and saw and said, what? Brother, wasn't we just here last year? Or two years ago, was it this spot here? Then, yeah, yeah, it sure looks familiar here. Just the same old thing. Glory to God, the Lord's coming. The Lord's going to bless. We're going to do mighty things. Next year, another badge has come in the same old thing. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. God's really going to move. We're going to turn the world upside down. We're going to have another apostolic church just like it did on day of Pentecost. Four years go by. Then you see all that old carnality and all that old works of the flesh and you get so discouraged and then you, you leave that spot and go to another church. Amen. And then there's the same old thing again, just working up, hooping it up, never getting no work. Hey, and we've been here before. Hey, we heard this before. <clears throat> You know, the evangelists in America always tickle me. They always got a big paper bag blowed up. It looks like it's filled with something. It's all blowed up and it hasn't got nothing but a bunch of air in it. They're always stirring the people up with what God's going to do, see. And they never, and the years that go by, nothing never happens, see. They'll just keep trying to find an evangelist to stir somebody up. Just keep journeying around. They wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. And see the miracle working of God. Listen, Pentecost, so called, has wandered around, brother, in this wilderness since God poured out his spirit as Azusa Street for over 40 some years. Amen. Brother Branham was on this earth with signs, wonders, and miracles that's never been seen before since the book of Acts. Amen. And they have Amen. saw the glory of God and still have not found rest for their souls. Amen. Yes, sir. All right, now look at here. We see that God is perfected in three steps of a journey. Justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You are to work out your salvation with fear and trembling until you get sealed by God. Amen. Then you rest. You don't have to worry no more whether or not you're going to rest. You don't have to worry no more whether or not you're going to make heaven your home. God has come down by the baptism of the Holy Ghost and has vindicated to you that he has accepted your faith in the three words of grace. He has accepted your faith in the word of God. And brother, it's a rest, brother. You don't worry about nothing anymore. Why? Because you've got God. Tabernacle over a uh, written epistle, and it's known and read of all men. Hallelujah to God. It's a rest to your soul. Brother, you don't care where you're in a desert, on a mountaintop, or in a valley, brother. You've got the victory every day. You're on a mountaintop all the time. With God. You don't hunger and thirst anymore. You've got a, you got a belly full of rivers. Raise the water pouring out of it. Then the sick are healed, the blind see, and the lame walk. And the gospel is preached in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. It's a rest. You got a fellowship. You got a oneness with God. You're one with God. See? But oh, the people in Israel could not find that rest because of unbelief. Right? But there was two there that found rest for their soul. Oh, Glory to God. Joshua and Caleb. What would have happened if God had not prepared a place for that word of God that was in the ark? Huh? What would have happened if God had not predestinated a place for that word to fall? All of the caskets of all of the patriarchs that was lined up on the banks of the Jordan would have been bowed down as the Jordan. Oh, the old bones and dust of Joseph, Sarah, and all of the great prophets and patriarchs there would be lined up in the caskets and they'd been bowed down as the Jordan. But God had predestinated a ground for that word covenant that God gave to Moses. It's your land, I give it to you, go and take it. Amen. And they rose up and said, oh, don't murmur and complain. It's a good land and let us go up now. We are more than able to take the land. We're more than able to do it. Let us go up now, don't we? Then God.
God made those that doubted the promise of God to wander 40 years in the wilderness until they all died. And so shall it be today. Every carcass that don't believe God's word today for, uh, for another revival, even greater than they had on the day of Pentecost, and for a rest and the fulfillment of the promise of God today, every carcass will die in the tribulation. I don't care who it is. Brother, it's either a faith or I believe. You're either a believer or a make believer, and now it's time for God to prove who is a believer and who is a believer. Amen. Those that believe God will take God at his word and say, we're more than able to take this night. Amen. Regardless of the opposition. Brother, any spirit today will tell you that Mark 16 and 15 and St. John 14 and 12, Hebrews 13 and 18 and Hebrews 4 and 12 is for another day, brother. Curse that thing and rise up and cut this Jordan in. Amen. Amen. It don't make no difference who says it's for this day. Brother, the Great Commission of Matthew and Mark and the Gospel of John as my heavenly Father sent me so send I you yes. and Jesus Christ said here is the true sign of a believer not if they say I believe the message not if they shout not if they speak in tongues but if they truly believe the word of God these signs shall yes. follow yes. and believe yes. in my name they'll pass out of the devil's and they'll speak with new tongues. Yeah. If they drink any deadly thing, it won't harm them. If they lay hands up on the sick, they shall recover. Yeah. And the works that I do shall pay you off. Yeah. And greater works than these shall you do. Oh, yeah. oh blind loud as the other day. Thou sayest thou victim with the Holy Spirit, but thou art naked, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Have yeah. I stand on this church to open their eyes with the eyes to have a revelation that they might see that they need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. commanded their officers of the people saying pass through the host and command the people saying prepare you fiddles over them three days yeah. you'll pass over this Jordan Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, I didn't say four days did it where's Pentecost at now come on where's it at in there they were still just sanctified Amen. Now come on, there's only three works of grace. Amen. There's only three steps in the Christ. Amen. There's only three works that get you to perfection. Yeah. You can't be no more perfect, brother, than having God tabernacle inside of you. Amen. Amen. Well, where's Pentecost at in there? There's only three days' journey to the rest. Amen. Brother Branham only taught three steps, and I always taught three steps of grace. How many remember that? Amen. Well, where's Pentecost at in there? If they had the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the rest of God, 
Well, where's the ad in there? That makes four. They were still just sanctified. They never had the baptism. They just got more of the Spirit, enough in them to work with gifts. Amen. <clears throat> you can speak with tongues. You can heal the sick. You can give your body to be burned. You can preach the gospel in the power of the Spirit. You can cast out devils. But if you ain't got the baptism, boy, you're just sounding brass and singing. I don't want to say charity. The better translation is love, and the Holy Ghost is love. The dove. Tell me, say amen. amen. We're sad in there, ain't that? No, Pentecost is this. We've mm-hmm. gone down to Laodicean church. They were only sanctified. They never had it. If they'd got the baptism of Zeus the Street, Jesus would come years and years ago. Amen. And we'd done being in the millennium a long time. About 40, 50 years. I'm going to say amen. amen. It won't hurt. Listen, prove all things. No matter how much it hurts anybody, how popular it makes you, bless God, say what God said. Amen. And then nobody will believe it hardly, but God will come around and prove that thing. Amen. See? Oh, everybody makes fun of that. Because everybody believes that they're rich in the spirit. Glory to God, I'm ready to go. Well, we ain't no more like Pentecost than a man is in the moon. That's right. I don't believe there's any man up there. Could you compare us today with those that come out of the upper room? My, what in blind Laodicea. Blind Laodicea. Blind. Within three days, you're passing over this Jordan to go in to possess the land. Now notice here that the land of Canaan, many Bible scholars teach that the land of Canaan that the church of Israel was journeying to was a type of the millennium. It is not. It is not. It is I got it just like the some of the old saints that I got it just like it is in the beginning. But when it gets like it's in the Word, <laughs> don't look like you got it like it did in the beginning. In the beginning, the first beginning that I know of, they was all in darkness without any rest at all, a labor and breaking bricks of denominations down in Egypt. Amen. And everybody has been a bricklayer in here. Amen. You laid bricks for I don't know how many years. How many better brick layers? Amen. Amen. You laid bricks for this one. Oh, you said it was apostolic, but you found out it wasn't. <laughs> you laid bricks in the Baptist and the Methodist and the... Go on, huh? And they talked about that land. I said they talked about that land down in Egypt. They told what's a good land. Why, I said that. It's a land full of living. It's a rest. We'll rest, see. But you know how long it had been down there, brother? 425 years. It went over 400 years. But they wouldn't receive profit. They'd been down there 400 some years. That's a lot of generations. And there wasn't a one of them that ever even seen the promise. I said there wasn't a one that ever seen the baptism of the Holy Ghost in operation. Amen. Did you hear what I said? I said there wasn't a one that ever even saw the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The promised land. No, they never. No, sir, they would never seen the land that only had a promise of it. Hmm? But there come a promise because of a fire burning the boot. Amen. Amen. The pillar of fire appeared to a man that knew that he had a call of God in his life. And he said, Moses, Moses, take off the shoes because this place you stand holy ground. And said, Moses, I remember my promise of the baptism. Oh, I remember my promise. That is the evening time I'm going to have a bride. I remember my promise. And I'm going to send you down to deliver them out of them denominations. Hallelujah. They've been making break, break down there for so long. 
They've been in bondage so long, but now Moses, I'm sending you. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Yeah. Amen. That's the first thing God done was to get the people to the promised land, their land of rest. Uh, the first Amen. thing he done was send a prophet. Amen. The second thing he done was identify that prophet with a pillar of fire. Amen. And this pillar of fire proved to them that there was a land beyond the river. Amen. 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 And they seen the evidence of the land. Amen. They seen the promise in the Bible where ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Amen. But they would not look a little further and said, to get it, you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So they couldn't get it. That's right. So God sent Moses down there to tell them how to get to the promise. Thank Thank the Lord. Lord. When they seen that pillar of fire and he not identified that God had appeared to this prophet. And his name was, just tell him that I am. I'm not the I was, God. I'm the I am. I am the same yesterday. Pay him for it. Huh? And then they saw the identification of the pillar of fire with the prophet. Said, boy, that lamb's over there and he's the one to take it to us. He's the one to take us to that land of promise where we'll get out of this bondage here and find rest for our souls. Hallelujah. Brother, up out of Egypt, they come following that prophet. But before, uh-huh, before they even saw the land, Moses said, you've got to get under the blood. Well, the first thing, God sent a prophet. The second thing he done was identify him with a, pill, identify him with a pillar of power. And the third thing God done was told them to plow the blood. Now, they applied the chemistry. They took the literal chemistry of the blood, put it over the doorpost, which the doorpost signifies the cross. That through the cross, the blood will be applied, right? Amen. To the heart of the believer. Amen. All right. Now, but the blood today, uh, the token today is not the blood. See? It is the life that was in the blood. Amen. 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 Huh? It's the life of Jesus Christ upon the belief. Amen. 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 That's the third thing. Now, people are trying to tell me today that they got the third thing before they got the first thing. You don't get glorified and then go back and get justified. You don't get glorified and then go back and get sanctified. Huh? And people are trying to tell me that they got the baptism of the Holy Ghost when they was down there making bricks. I don't care what you say. The Bible said you had never seen the land. Amen. You had never been that way before. Amen. And you didn't even know what it was like until Moses gave you the evidence of it. That's right. And brothers, sisters, we have been driving thousands of miles today across the country to see Moses the prophet today. And we've been living by the evidence of the land. Amen. 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 Proof that the land's there, we've seen the evidence. Amen. Amen. We know what it is, and now we're going after it. That's right. Amen. That's right. It's Paul that's Amen. speaking in tongues. Amen. It's Paul that prophesied. Amen. It's God's tabernacle in an individual. Amen. Proving he's the same yesterday, today. Amen. What is the Holy Ghost? It is God Himself inside your tabernacle. Amen. 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 His resident power is dwelling in an individual. And the signs that follow prove that he's in that. Yeah, amen. 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 What's the matter today? We got a profession without a possession. Right. Amen. Oh, it's not so. Rise up. Let somebody rise up and prove they got it. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now we're all trying to say Pentecost, Pentecost, rapture, rapture, and you're backing up to a picture that's painted of Pentecost. You'll never get your britches fun like that. I backed up to a real fire last night and sat down in the chair and burnt my leg. I may want the real fire. Amen. I don't want to back up the picture of Pentecost. Amen. Brother, I want what they had at Amen. Amen. I want to see the light. I want to hear the sound. Amen. I want the fire of Amen. 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 Evidence of the scriptures here that don't work out that way. Regardless of what you say, 
You didn't get it down in Egypt. And let me tell you something, that God don't give the baptism of the Holy Ghost to everybody that gets up and says, I see him smoke and drink and live in Adelphi and everything else. And get up and say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, speak in tongues. And be smoking in three days. And then run around with another man's wife. And that's the verse. God don't give that rest to nobody that don't labor and work to get it. Amen. Amen. I don't mean, I, I'm preaching great. But you work out your salvation with fear and trembling that you're staying with the Word of God. The Bible said that God gave the Holy Ghost the rest to them that obey Him. Amen. Huh? You've got to obey the Word. You've got to be tested before you go into the promised land. And where did God test them in their journey? Katie's barn. Amen. Yes, sir. <coughs> I think there's another scripture I want to read there with that. Now notice, three days journey. That's a type of the baptism, justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost puts you in your promised land. Now I believe, now listen, I believe with all of my heart that the only thing that is going to stand against the deception of the Satan today is a scriptural trained church. Amen. 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 Not just a whoop and holler, praise the Lord, I'm ready, but a scriptural, trained church that knows their enemy. Amen. And the only way that we can be scripturally trained is not reason this thing out and not be offended because it don't fit our little experience, but let your experience fit the word. Amen. And if your experience Amen. don't fit the word, then say, Lord, I want more. Amen. Amen. Now notice here, that it was just a three days journey to find rest, see? They should have made it in three days. Right. Now, <clears throat> now listen, Azusa Street, Azusa Street thought they had the rest, but it proved out they didn't. They didn't have it because they went right back and labored in bondage. Amen. Amen. Some of them were saved this week and was lost next week. And then they get saved. I heard one of them one night, this preacher been saved three times. What kind of God you serve and that can't keep you saved? Amen. He said, all that the Father giveth me will come to me. Him that comes to me will no wise be cast out. Amen. For the Father which gave him me is greater than all. Amen. Now notice here, this Jordan to go in and possess the land which the Lord your God giveth to you to possess it. And to the Reubenites and to the Gadites, to the half tribe of Manasseh spake Joseph, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord, your God, hath given you rest. Rest. And hath given you this land. Now, what was this land of Canaan? It was a rest. And the rest in the New Testament is the <coughs> baptism of the Holy Ghost. Is Amen. Rest. How many agree with Amen. 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 All right. Now, notice here that when the Joshua and them made their march across the Jordan. It was overflowing the Spain. Well, at the normal, at the normal tide of the bank of Jordan, you could walk over be about to be deep in place. But God let the banks flow over just to give them a test. You know, God always tests his people. Amen. And that's one thing that the make-believer is afraid of. It's a test. They don't like a test on the Word of God. But the believer loves it. He joys in his trials and his tribulations and his testings. Is that right? Amen. Now notice, the bride of Jesus Christ today by vision of God given to the prophet got out of step. Yes, amen. But nobody is willing to probe in it and pray about it to find out where she got out of step. She got out of step but not going on in her journey. Amen. Brother, we're not going backward amen. into Egypt to oh. listen to God. Oh, we're going home. Amen. 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 See? But she got out of step. Instead of going on in a journey. Where'd she get out of step at? Right here at the crossing of the Jordan into the rest. The promise. Amen. That's why that you don't see the church on fire for God today. Because she has no power for service. Right? And they answer, well, why isn't signs of one group? Why isn't the glory of God revealed? Well, they say, well, it's to follow later. Yeah, that's right. It's to follow later when we get it. 
That's when right. When we get to the house that they got to Pentecost, it's going to follow immediately. Amen. Brother, they come down to the upper room and work, work miracles, heal the sick, open the blinded eyes, and turn the world upside down immediately. Amen. Amen. You don't get the fire, brother, and wait till it goes out. <laughs> huh? No, brother, when it's burning, you're giving light all the time. Everybody, somebody Amen. touches their finger on they get burned. Lord, it's Amen. hot fire all the time. Brother, that church was hot as fire right until they hit my city council. How many say amen? amen? They was hot as fire. The more they killed them, the hotter they got. Right. Uh, they was on fire for Jesus Christ. Glory Look at her today. Uh, how many agree that there's something wrong somewhere? Amen. Amen. I'll be just as plain as can be. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Preachers are afraid to stand out and, and, and say it like it is. I, ain't. I don't care if they think I'm a nut. I don't care what they think about me. I can only say what God gives me to say. Amen. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. How do you think the words of Brother Brown is going to be fulfilled when he says God will come and prove which is right and which is right? You know what the reward of believing Brother Brown's message is? Receiving the token. 100% obedience to the word message entitles you to receive the token. Amen. Now work out your salvation fear and tremble that you're believing. Because when you can't receive it, it's evident that you're not believing. That's true. Right. Wow. That's in time. Oh, boy. I, I have to watch. I get preaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost too much. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think that's what we need more than anything. Amen. How many want power for certain? The reason you don't have it now is because we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The experience is sure I've had them too, but I've got the rest in the Word. It's all the seem to say to you. Had the word of the Lord, uh, uh, everything, but I can't say that. I can only say what God said. <clears throat> now notice that this church was to go into that rest in a in a three days journey. They were seeking rest. Now we have been wandering around in denominations. Uh, that's the Presbyterian sent all we just send everything and couldn't find no rest. We get out and say, Oh, honey, I ain't satisfied with this church. I it just ain't satisfying me. I'm, I'm hungry. I, I got to find something else. Well, you up and move. You move over here. You go into all this. Say, we're going to have it just like a hand on death. And cost. We're going to do everything just exactly like the word says. And I know we're going to have a church just like they had a real apostolic. So they put a sign out front. Apostolic faith mission. Apostolic faith. What? Don't matter to nothing. Amen. Then they try to work us up and they go into some kind of ism or schism. Huh? Yeah. So we can see it. Here we was down in this aisle. Down here in this hour, wandering around without any rest. How many is miserable out in denominations? You just couldn't find no satisfaction for your soul. That goes to show you that something's wrong. Huh? Right. If the, listen, the Bible said the deep call under the deep. Amen. Yes. Well, brother, if there's something deep down in there that's calling out for something, there's got to be something out there. Amen. Right. And I believe it is the baptism of the Holy Ghost that Amen. supplies that, that wanting of the deep. Amen. Amen. Well, I just know that I know that I know it's right. That's all there is to it. I just know that it's right. God's going to come through. If you don't, then it ain't right. Right? But I'm persuaded it is. Let's see, look at 1 Samuel now. I can't find Samuel and Ezekiel. Let's see. 1 Samuel 4 and 21. First Samuel 4 and 21. Now, I don't have time to read all this. Now, in the fourth chapter of First Samuel, we find the story of the ark of the covenant that was filled with the, the church. Now, notice down here. Now, we had a prophet, Samuel, that was, had the word of the Lord that never fell to the ground, right? <clears throat> we had a corrupted priesthood that was corrupted. And God had pronounced judgment upon it. Now at the same time, look here in uh, verse 17, we we'll start reading the story of how the Philistines, the Philistines took the ark of the covenant away from Israel. And now uh, and many of Israel were slaughtered, about 30,000 were slaughtered that day. And a messenger is coming back to the uh, priest 
<coughs> and giving him the news. And we'll start reading in the 17th verse. And the message answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. And there hath been also a great slaughter among the people, and thy two sons also, Hope and I and Finus, are dead, and the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that he fell off the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck broke, and he died. For he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel forty years. And his daughter-in-law, Finus' wife, was with child near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and prevailed, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. She named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. Yeah. Now notice that as long, as Israel, the church, had the ark of God, of the covenant that God gave them, they had the glory of Jehovah in their midst. Amen. They had a God that went out before them and defeated all their enemies with great signs yes. and wonders and miracles. Amen. They had a God that they could go and inquire of, and he would answer right back. Yes. He gave dreams, he gave the interpretation of them. Is that right? Amen. The word of the Lord came to them. And they could ask, should we go up? They had perfect leadership from God Almighty. They could ask to go up and smite their enemies. He'd tell them whether to go, how to go, and how to defeat them and everything. See? They had the glory of God in their midst as long as they had the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. And that's why that when the, uh, this lady here, Finus' wife, heard the news that the Ark of God was taken away from Israel, then she... She prophesied there and said, The glory of God has departed from the church. That's right. True. The glory of God has departed from the church. Ichabod is rode over the thing. That's right. Amen. And brother, it was Ichabod was rode over Israel when that ark left. Amen. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The guys that got it got the hottest thing that they ever got a hold of. Amen. They got a hold of the hottest thing that they'd ever got a hold of, the Philistines. They had never got a hold of anything. Why, well, they didn't think anything about that little old wooden ark there. Why, well, it didn't look like nothing. And they took it up there to their great denomination, huh? And put it in there before their God. And, uh, and the, the great uh, theologian came in the next day and walked in, and there was their God bowed right down before the ark. Amen. Both hands was broke off. His head was broke Amen. off. His body was broke off. There wasn't nothing left but his stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible said that them priests wouldn't slide up on that threshold of this thing. That's right. And they said, look here, get this thing out of here. We don't know what's in that wood thing there, but get it out of here. <laughs> they called one, another, one of the other great denominations, about five of them there, and they called one of the other great overseers, probably the Methodist church, yeah. and said, look here, we got a real uh, antique here that was taken. Yeah. And uh, it said it's got gold on it, gold rings, it's laid as gold, and it's got uh, two tables of stone in there with writing on it that says it's the original God that wrote it, and it said, look here, we don't want them. They didn't tell them the trouble that this has with it. See, that's the way they do. And uh, they sent it over there. And when they got over there, brother, all the men that was in that land broke out with a horrible disease. Yes, sir. And they was all in pain. They had hemorrhoids. And that is the most painful thing that can be known. It's a bad case of hemorrhoids. And brother, every big strong man was struck down with that uh, embarrassing disease of hemorrhoids. And brother, God humbled that whole place with hemorrhoids. Glory to God. And they said, my, my, get that piece of wood out of here before we all die. Glory. They took it up to another denomination and got it up there. <laughs> oh, they was all, well, wow, my, that sure is antique. Yeah, look at that gold, huh? They all broke out with hemorrhoids. They got scared to death. They didn't know what to do with it. And they said, look here. This God that dwells in this ark, listen, he, there ain't going to be none of us left if we don't get this back to where it belongs. We better get this thing out of here and get it back to where it belongs. 
At least we all died. I said, why is our Philistine brothers brought this curse upon us here? Why'd they keep that ark up there? It's going to kill us all. Amen. Oh, brother, I tell you, there ain't nothing as powerful as that word. Amen. Brother, it'll make everything bow down to Amen. it. Amen. 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 Nothing can stand before the word. Amen. Well, they said, I tell you, there was some there, though, that still in all that pain of hemorrhoids still couldn't give glory to God. They said, now we can find out whether or not it's of God. Uh, it's, this ark ain't supposed to be with us. Now, we'll take an old milk cow that's just had that calf. Now, boys, you know, brother, I know this brother through with cows. If you ever tried to dry, drag a, a cow that's fresh away from a calf, you better get you a crane or something. They'll step on your toes. They'll lay down. They'll bawl. They'll swallow. They'll do everything. You'll never get them away from that barn where they cast that. Is that right? And this old Philistine come up with a good idea. I see Marie shaking her head. She's a little farm girl. She probably fooled on one of them old cows before. That old uh, denominational man there said, Now look here. You get this fresh cow. We'll put that ark on it, on these two fresh cows. And, and, and if it goes back toward the church, the, the Israel there, said, Then we'll know that the hand of God has smoked us because of this ark. And if not, that this thing is just... The old hemorrhoids that just come up on about 500,000 of us just accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tell you, ain't, ain't, a, ain't, a, ain't an unbeliever something. <laughs> ain't an unbeliever something. It's just accidentally the 500,000 of us being stripped with hemorrhoids. Can't work, can't go to work, can't do nothing. Just an accident. We'll know it. it it's just been peradventure. It's been that. Well, they said that's a good idea, for we know that if those, those fresh mid cows ain't going to go nowhere. We drag them out there, they're going to turn right around and come back to the barn. Well, they put the ark on there. And uh, they turned the cow loose there. Brother, they started the bawling and the swallowing and went toward it. Amen. As hard as they could go. And when they come into the border there, some of the brothers, they run up, and when they seen the ark was coming, they started jumping and shouting and clapping their hands. When they seen the ark coming, because they know the glory is coming back. Oh, well, they, they, they've been away for a long time. They've been away from it. They hadn't seen the glory of God. They hadn't had no revival, brother. You believe me, they couldn't get no nothing. No signs, no wonders, no miracles. It's all scared to death and afraid. But oh, here comes this little ark. Oh, Hallelujah. they begin to shout and begin to praise God. And they run out there and grab the cows and, and the old Philistines is watching. Oh, they wouldn't touch that. No, they'd never had nothing like that before. Now, now, listen, they never bothered Israel from then on, I'll tell you that. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> they, they sacrificed the cows there on the great rock. Amen. But they got in trouble. They said, let's just look in there. It won't hurt nothing. The priest ain't around. Let's just look in there. And they peeped in there. All the people of that land come by and peeped in the ark. God smoked 50,000 of them. You tell me that the word of God ain't something? Yes. Hundreds of thousands of Philistines were stricken with hemorrhoids and almost died, and 50,000 of God's own people were struck and dead by looking in the eye. Amen. Brother, I tell you, to come to this word today and handle it, brother, it'll eat you up, as Brother Gatman said. Amen. It'll eat you up. Look what it's done to the denomination today. Cursed them by the hundreds of thousands of millions. Yes, sir. All right, now, David, the story comes in here of David. The ark had been away from the church. They had no glory of God. As long as that ark's away, there's no revival. Amen. Now, notice here that every time that a group of people got a revelation upon the word, the ark to us is the word now. That brought the ark word back into their presence. And every time the word comes back to the people, there is a move of God in power called revival. Amen. Now revival signifies, listen now, revival signifies a move of God in power. Amen. And when that ark was coming back, David got a revelation that there was going to be a revival Amen. to the church. Yeah. Are you with me? Amen. He got a revelation that this ark so supernaturally come out of the Philistine country by those milk cows 
And he heard how it was, uh, they had stricken 50,000 and then they moved it over in the house of another little brother. And he didn't look at it, but he treated the ark like it was supposed to be treated. And God blessed that house or that individual yes, there. Amen. And that house had revival continuous. Yes, as long as that word was there. Amen. Is that right? So David got a revelation that this word ark was on its way back to its final resting place. Notice it had been in the journey all through the Philistine country. Is that right? Yes. And it was coming back for its final resting place and for its final revival. Amen. Oh, brother, I don't know what that means, but that does mean it's good. All right. Now, notice here. When the ark, the first church at Pentecost, as we know it in Acts 2 and 4, they had received the Word of God tabernacle in their human flesh. Is that right? Amen. And uh, the Word was crucified at Calvary and went away. Is that right? Amen. But the ark, the, the Word dwelt not in a wooden ark, but it dwelt in a human heart. Hallelujah. See? It dwelt in 120 human hearts. Yes, yes. Now, any time that the ark settles down in a new resting place, the glory of God comes and settles down in that, over that yeah. testament. Yeah. Yeah. See, over that covenant. Yeah. And this was a new day. It brought in a law, turn it over to grace. And when 120 received the prophet, Jesus Christ, he said, how can we do the works of God? He said, believe on him whom he has sinned. Yes. He said, labor not for the meat that perisheth. All these other preachers, yes. their doctrine, don't labor for that doctrine. No. Of all these other preachers, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees. Yes. But he said, you, you that really believe me, he said, you labor for the meat which the Son of Man, the prophet, giveth. Yes. Amen. For him hath God the Father sealed. Yes. What is the seal of God to the believer? The seal of God is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He said, Now I seal the Son of Man with the baptism of the Holy Amen. Ghost. Amen. And that is the word coming forth from him. You labor for that. God coming to settle over the word. Amen. The glory of God came on the day of Pentecost to settle down over that word and to make it manifest. Amen. And they went out there working signs, wonders, and miracles. The very same works that Jesus Christ did, the apostles did. Amen. And they took note of them that they had been with Jesus. They healed the lame. They opened the blinded eyes. They raised the dead. They stopped storms. They did all great signs, wonders, and miracles because they had the spirit and glory of God tabernacled over that word. Hmm? But long, a few years later, when the glory of God was still, was still resident with the people because they had the word ark with them. There's something happened that Paul spoke about, the mystery of iniquity that's already worked. And that mystery of iniquity, like the Philistines, at the Nicene Council, stole the ark away. Yes, amen. And when the Nicene Council stole the ark away from the church there, Brother, it was Ichabod, the glory that they had at Pentecost faded away. The glory of God departed from the church. And we went through what we know as the dark ages. All right, now we come through the dark ages. Now, God has predestinated that our word to come back to its final resting place. Hallelujah. Yes. Now there's many hundreds and thousands of preachers realize that why we did not have the power of God was because we have lost the real true revelation of the word. Amen. So they begin to try to take the Greek word and many uh, PhDs and LLDs raised up and wrote commentaries and that if we can just get the Greek word, word for word, word for word, we can have another revival like they had at Pentecost. And they've tried and raised up great men, great learned men, wrote commentaries after commentaries, 
And still the church is just dead as can be. There was no glory of God at all. Yet we built church buildings, church buildings, church buildings. Thousands of preachers raised up and tried to bring back the ark of God, to bring back the glory of God. They come with all kinds of different interpretations. You can read them in church history all the way down. But God, now, here's something I, I really want this is the reason I preach. I want you to see this real quick. Now we look back at history. Oh, in the old Bible, as long when that ark came, when that ark came, brother, there was a shout in the camp when that ark started coming back. They shouted and screamed till it shook the ground to hear for miles and for miles and miles how their voices rang into the atmosphere when they seen that little wooden ark coming in. Why, it didn't look much like to the unbelievers of the world, but boy, what it meant to the chosen people of God. And uh, notice here, when the ark, the word in our New Testament day was some of that word that was uh, promised for this day was revealed to a man, Martin Luther. He got just a little bit of that word and said the judge shall live by faith. There was the ark of God for this day started making his journey back to his final resting place. Amen. See, that was evident that the ark was coming back now to its final resting place. Now notice that it couldn't find no resting place. See? But when David sought to bring the ark back, he got a revelation that it was time for revival. Amen. And if he got a revelation of the ark coming back, it meant revival. What is the matter with the people today that say there's no revival for the bride? Why, you don't even know. I don't know how to put it. I can't express it. You don't know nothing. <laughs> you don't know nothing. That's all I know. You don't know nothing. If you don't know that the ark coming back means that you're going to have revival, you're really blind. Yeah. Oh, Every time that when David got in trouble by trying to bring the ark back, see, there were three things that David should have known that we were taught in this day. See, though you got a revelation now that revival was coming back, you've got to remember these three things. First, it's got to be in its season. It's got to be the right season for the spirit to fall. That's the first thing. The second thing, that man that is preaching it, it is God, because that's what's going to bring. Amen. Now, remember, now I don't want to hurt no feelings, but this is the way it's going to be. It ain't going to be no other way. Uh, I don't mean you know it all, but I can't help it. This is the way it's going to be. <laughs> I have to be that preach. I don't know what I'm talking about. Then better shut up. Well, they said, I can't help what the other preacher. They said, church order. Well, it'll kill church. I can't help about the other sin. I don't know about mine. You do what you want to do. Yeah. Brother Brandon said, they do it or go down. I do it. I ain't want to go down. I want to go up. Amen. 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 I can't help people don't praise God and don't sing. You're backslid. Amen. If you don't sing and worship the Lord, you're backslid. You're cold in the spirit. You can't right. sit right with God. Right. Is that right? Amen. But the ark coming back to its final resting place, David got a revelation of this that it was time for revival. Now there's three things that David should have recognized. First, was it in its season? Was he the man to do it? Now the second was, was it in the Word? The third thing, is he the man for the job? Amen. What well, turned out that he had the right revelation. But you see, there was no resting place for the ark. There was no resting place for it. Solomon built the resting place. How many say? There was no resting place for the ark. There was no resting place for it. Solomon built the resting place. How many say you mean? All right now. When Solomon, and we know the story how, how the little brother reached up to stay of the ark and God smote him and David got upset and was angry at God. But listen, God keeps his word. He said, don't touch that ark. It's to be carried by the Levites and they don't touch it. They slip that pole into the ring and they carry it over their heart. They carry it over their heart here. And that's where the uh, only man that God can use is one that God has predestinated and called because he's got the message on his heart. Amen. 
He's going to answer the tithes and the offerings and to make a name for himself. He has got the message of God on his heart. He loves that message. And that's the only one that can carry No matter how much you think you want to preach, that don't have nothing to do with it. It must be predestinated and the revelation must be on the heart. And that man is so in love with that revelation that he'll die for it. He'll stretch out his head. He'll do anything to keep that message. Now notice here. There was no resting place for the ark. Though it was though it was a revelation that David had, true revelation, but it was not uh, there was no temple built yet. Now notice that Solomon, God blessed Solomon and he built the temple. And he built a house for the Lord. Which is the type, which is the type of Pentecost. The first temple of Solomon is the type of the first temple, the first fruit that's Pentecost. Now, Solomon built this place for the for the Ark Covenant to rest. And the Levites, God's chosen ones, brought the Ark in and set it in its place. What happened? Immediately, immediately, the glory of God come down and came and set over this Ark and filled the whole temple until the ministers looked in there. It was so smoky that they couldn't see. The glory of God was so thick in there that they had to come out. They couldn't stand it. Yes, amen. Now, can you imagine standing in a time when the they only had the chemistry of the blood of the lamb, and the because of the ark find, finding its final resting place, it didn't have to go through the wilderness, through the Philistines, from here to there. It found the resting place, and the glory of God came so great to this ark of the testament. Without the shed blood of Jesus Christ, right. the glory was so great that the minister had to leave the building and come outside. They couldn't stand it so powerful in there. Brother, what about the day when the ark of the word today finds its final resting place in the bride? And not under the blood of bulls and goats, but under the blood of Jesus Christ. What kind of glory is going to come oh. You try to tell me that there's no revival, you blind Laodicea, you. Yes. You're blind. Yes. Why, well, don't even have words to express what kind of revival it will be. The glory of God was so great that they could not even stand the minister. Had to leave. Now that was just under the blood of bulls and goats. What kind of glory came in that room? With a hundred and twenty that that received the word of what kind of glory came into that room? But then men could go out and steal their lives and count it nothing but joy. I'd hate for us to face the world council of churches today with what we got. Amen. But brother, they went out and Peter, who was once the coward, that was afraid, and all the disciples ran like a bunch of rats when the persecution started. They ran from him and left him alone. Is that right? Peter swore down, oh, I'll stand that persecution. I'll stand that world council of churches. I'll never forsake you, Lord. He said, before the cock crow, you deny me three times. Oh, brother, that's where we're at today. We do a lot of boasting when we feel the little blessing of the Lord. I'll do this. I'll do this, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And when it comes down to paying her tithes or for the women to let their dress cover their knees, you don't say yes, Lord, then. That's true. Brother, I want to tell you something. I, I was just sick at this meeting at the tabernacle. There sat some women in the back. Brother, they had a horn spirit on them that I don't see in the Bible. I don't care if it's pins or hurt, brother, but it's got to be safe. And sit there with them high heel shoes on, and you know that you cannot walk that first step with grace with them high heel shoes on. Amen. I don't care what you think about it. The devil invented a high heel shoe the first time to make a woman's calf more beautiful so the men could lust after it. Amen. I may say amen. amen. You say you're standing because Brother Brown did. I preached it before I ever heard him preach it. Amen. amen. I may amen. say amen. 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 I told my wife, told them damnable things that God told me that the devil invented. She told them out. She didn't know him better, but I told her. Amen. Brother, that's right. A woman ain't supposed to maybe not know all them things. But I tell you one thing, a man ought to tell us so. Amen. 
And I sat there in a tabernacle where the prophet of God preached holiness, brother, without compromising. He preached holiness, hell, fire, brimstone. And I said, women with long hair said amen and praise God and everything. Big high heel shoes on and their dresses well above their knees. When they crossed their legs, it was well, well above their knees. I wonder if we could sing a little song we sang right then in their condition. Could we say, yes, Lord? I want to tell you something. It is shameful for women not to have enough dress on to cover their knees and say that they're going in a rapture. You ain't going. I'll put it that way. I don't care what anybody says. Amen. Without holiness, no man or woman shall see God. Amen. What's the matter with the church today? That's what's the matter today. Brother, we need an old time. St. Paul, Holy Ghost, and I lose and kill him about. Amen. We need a preacher from the back. Where's the pulpit? Amen. That's what we need today. We need to hear the old time religion preach. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't care if it goes on another 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. You'll never modernize the old time gospel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Holiness or hell. Amen. Amen. Oh, I, I, Thank you, Lord. I, I got a free. Women, get your something down over your knees. You got one dress, wash it out and put it on again. Amen. Get something to cover yourself. Ain't that awful? Amen. After all that prophet preached, what good did it do? He said, I have a question answer. About the women work, said, I don't know, brother, what to do. I've preached it. I've preached it my preaching. They still cut their hair. Oh, God. And he said, oh, what's the matter with people? You talk about heaven. You talk about resurrection. Brother, it'll not do you no good if you don't be doers of the word. Amen. And what's the matter with the men today that won't tell their wives? You are a weaky, warty, backslidden imposter, Christian. Amen. Amen. What's the matter? Just like the prophet said, we got a, a man today that's got a waist bone instead of a backbone. Amen. Oh, we'll act pious when we come to church and we act like we're the head of the house. But when you go to your house, a lot of today, it's a different story. I went in a home in Jeffersonville and a man didn't follow Brother Branham across the country. And there was his wife with her hair cut, little old thin teeny dress on, and a big car television with the children watching. I don't care how much you follow that prophet. I don't care what you say. Your life that you live is an evidence of what you're lusting on. Amen. Amen. How many say amen? Amen. 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 amen? amen. It don't hurt nothing for the women to let their dresses down a little bit. I'm not saying down to the ankles, but it's disgraceful. They knew it. If they didn't know it, and Brother John Martin and I were sitting there, why did they keep stretching that nylon wool dress? It won't stretch but so far. Why did they keep stretching on it for two hours and a half? It shows you that your conscience was convicted by the presence Amen. of the minister of God. Amen. 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 And then if your conscience is convicted, then you have no faith. And faith is the only thing that pleases God. Amen. See, and we say we believe. But what do we do about it? I know the devil hates holiness. I know he hates that as much as he does the seat of the church. And the devil is creeping in stronger than some. People are buying television. I would not have one in my house. Amen. And if you got one in your house, your household is backslidden. Amen. It is backslidden. Show me any home that's got a television and they watch it. I'll show you a backslidden family. Amen. Right. Amen. Quiet in here. I right. 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 little captive boy heard some preaching on holiness. I said, how'd you like that? He said, I understood it and liked it well. He said, I couldn't understand the preacher too good when he got to the place where he got mad. <laughs> so when we start preaching holiness, <clears throat> it's not that we're mad. We've got to get it to medicine. Amen. How many want to go in a rapture? Amen. Amen. We have to line up with the Word of God. And it's the women dress yourself in modest apparel. 
and all uh, the women, I felt so sorry for them, and it made me sick too. <laughs> I said, poor little thing. And then I get kind of agitated in my spirit. Of course, Brother John, it just about got him so bad he couldn't stand it. They stretch that material and they pull it and they pull it. It, it won't come down. It was eight inches too short or more. And I, I would hate to say how I didn't want to look that way after they crossed the leg. Now, to me, you see, if God told Moses that them Levites, when they come up near that mercy seat, had to climb up a ladder there, that Moses, if they climb up there and they don't have long underwear on, and I discover the naked, nakedness that you come packing out dead. Yes. That's a man. God's a man. Yes. Now, what do you think about a woman who is supposed to, to uh, uh, she's entrusted with her body to keep it covered? Did you know the women of Israel, why they covered their face? Do you know why women, why they covered their face? Because they're afraid that even a man would look at them, their beautiful lips and eyes, and they start lusting even from looking at the beautiful face, so they covered their face. Well, what do you think about women today that's uncovered almost as well, you know? That's why God is going to burn the earth. And any man, any mother, that would let their children wear a mini skirt, brother, is either demon pope death. Or just earn God. They don't know God. Amen. I said demons Amen. possessed. Amen. I didn't say oppressed. I said demons possessed. Amen. Now it may not be. Well, what do you think Legion had in him? He had a naked devil, an unclean devil in him. Amen. And when Jesus cast out the devil out of Legion, the Bible said he was set in clothes and in his right mind. Amen. So if you let your daughter unclothe herself, then you're not in your right mind. Amen. It's the devil that sets the women off. Amen. Then they're out of their mind. Well, I've been preaching this way a long time. I ain't done nobody off yet. <laughs> I think the true saints got love for them. It don't hurt just to let the dress go down and hair go long. Those were easy little things. Those were ABCs. But it was the ABCs that upset the Pentecostal church world more than anything. It upset Brother Old Robert so bad he's gone back into medicine. Tried to lay hands on the prophet. The prophet said, don't do that. Oh, God. It really hurt. It hurt, friends, to see what we could have today. Among us, the glory of God should be so powerful today that the earth would be quivered under the impact of men and women that's filled with the Holy God. We've got to line up with these little Lord, things. We can't progress if we don't line up with the little things. Huh? Sure. Now, every time that we've seen, when we've seen that word beginning to unfold to Martin Luther, that was evidence right there that the ark was in its journey back for a revival. Yes. Now, every place that that ark stopped over, they had revival. Or curse one. When that just that little bit of the word, the just shall live the faith. Look how the power of God struck Martin Luther in the world. The world never got over the Lutheran, Lutheran Reformation. How many say that? Amen. And just the, that little word, the just shall live the faith. Now, after that, the ark couldn't find a final resting place because they denominized it. Became a denomination. And the ark, the word picked up, went over and fell in John Wesley's pocket. John Wesley went out. Now I want to take them, brother. I want to take them. We're not even living what the Wesley, the spirit of grace that fell on the Wesley, on John Wesley and his followers. We're not even living what Wesley is. Amen. The followers of this message. Amen. The followers of this message are not even living what Wesley is. His people. It's a shame that we don't appreciate the prophet of God and the messenger any more than we do. That we conduct our lives. You say that you love Brother Brown. Let me tell you something. My brother, he did. Let me tell you right now. You know what that prophet stood for. I'd rather be dead than bring this grace on to my family or myself. And say that you love Brother Brown and we sit and watch that filthy television. Let me tell you something. It's the devil put the television in your house. Amen. That uncensored, ungodly, wicked thing that comes over in television. My grandmother had it. And I had I said, Mom, I can't stand it. I gotta get out of here. I, I can't stand it. watch that thing. 
So they just have to watch it. Naked women come out, and you know what it was? They had a movie on television about the gospel preached by the Christian church back in the days of when the men fought in the went into these countries, I forget their names now, and then big boats and everything. I forget the names. But it was a real funny picture. Because them preachers, they'd always grab a naked woman and kiss her. I said, Mom, that sure from Christianity, ain't it? I said, that's the nastiest, that's the nastiest gospel I've ever seen. And every time a scene had changed, why, well, he'd go into another part of the country taking that gospel, or he'd always be a, a big, beautiful woman with his clothes off. He'd grab her in a tent and kiss her in her face. I said, my God, and that, that, that's an expression of Christianity. Why, well, a bunch of dogs, flopping dogs. I couldn't stand it. I told my wife, I, I got to get out of here. I can't stand that thing. I said, that's why I wouldn't have one in my house, Mom. And then go in to believe it and see that one-eyed mom that's sitting there. Oh, it's awesome. Not if you want to pick. I've got too many things to preach about. I've very seldom preached. I, yeah, I don't preach like this all the time. But I, I tell you, that's, that's heartbreaking to hear you say that you love Brother Bannon sitting there watching that thing. And that's the end of the world here. And no prayer life, not on fire for God, and don't even have the seal of the token yet. Oh, brother, you better watch out. That's enough on that. But now look here. You see what happened when that word, closing now, when that word came in toward its journey of its final resting place. When it sat down with Luther, they had a revival that shook the world. When it sat down with Wesley, they had a revival that shook the world. Is that right? Now I ask you, what have we seen in this dying hour that you're living in? Not just part of that word that sat down with Luther. Not just another little part that sat down with Wesley. Not just another little part where the ark sat down with those of the Zeus streets. Now remember, they were still just in sanctification. But the ark, they thought, was on its final stage of the journey. But it wasn't. And there the, the ark of God wandered around from one Pentecostal church to another. This would break off. This would break off. This would get sincere. The word would come in there. And it would bring a revival every place. Now, and this hour that we're talking about, God has predestinated a resting place, a final resting place for the word covenant of God. And that is the predestinated royal bride of Jesus Christ is the final resting place for the ark, the word of God today. Now, God sees him. The three things that we must remember, God sees him and time has come. In the evening time, in the Laodicean church age, there is to come a prophet that will pick up the ark word that was delivered to Pentecost, our apostolic fathers, and bring this ark, the fullness of it, back to the predestinated resting place that God promised to be made. Now what will that mean to all those that receive the full word today that's brought by the prophet of God to find its final resting place that's been predestinated from the foundation of the world. If that ark that came upon the provided place that was built by Solomon, and the glory of God was so great that they could not even mention it. Is that right? Yeah. And we see what it done with the Luther Reformation that struck the world. Wesley and Pentecost so-called. What will it be when the glory of God comes to settle down upon that tabernacle where the word ark is today. Yeah. Oh. Huh? What, what will it be? Right. Can you find any word to express what kind of glory will be revealed? No wonder, no wonder that the prophet of God in this eye says the world will be shaken. Yeah, right. right? Now the move is on for the bride. Why? Yeah. Because we can see that there has been a predestinated man of God predestinated to rise up and pick up the ark that floated around in these Philistine denominations. Pick it up and bring it back and put it in God's predestinated resting place. The whole bride of Jesus Christ. You can expect a revival of such a mammoth size that you have no words to express. Amen. This is the final resting place for the word today. 
the royal bride of Jesus Christ, and it is the final revival that the Gentile world is going to receive. But they ain't going to receive it because they're rejected. Now notice here that the mercy, I want you to understand this real good. The mercy seat. I don't want you to think, well, I can't do this, and Lord, I ain't worthy of this, and Lord, I ain't fit as no dog. Now listen. I don't know where I'm going to make it or not. Listen. I'm so cold and lukewarm. Now listen. The mercy seat. Mercy. How many love mercy? Oh, the great word mercy. Oh, the mercy seat was over top of the covenant. The word. The mercy seat was over top of the word. Now what does that mean for you and I today? It means that if you will let the word like the ark back there, the word in the ark, of course you're the ark now, see the word wants to come down in. If you will let that word that was in that ark, Jesus Christ, if you let that word that came in the Christ, the anointed one of the ark, the prophet, that message, the fullness of God's word, if you let that come in your heart and find its final resting place, you automatically receive the mercy seat. That's why that all that believe that prophet is going in that rapture and nobody else. Amen. That's why Jesus said, how can we do the works of God? Believe on him whom I have sent. Amen. Believe on him. Is that right? All that believe the prophet Noah went into the ark and received mercy. Mercy was in the ark. Amen. All that went into the ark received mercy. Amen. And all that received the word today by Malachi 4 and 5 received the mercy seat and the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Now notice, notice the beautiful scripture. In Zechariah 4 and 7 it says, uh, uh, The river Baal, which is the type of restoration today, the river Baal, was one that laid the foundation that built the temple. Amen. Rebuilt the temple of Sodom. Of Sodom, right? Amen. Now notice that the river bell is the type of the ministry today of restoration of Malachi 4 and 5. Amen. Now notice thou in Zechariah 4 and 7, it says, Who art thou, O great mountain? Now you know what the song says? This mountain shall be removed. You know that song? Yeah. All right, the song says, who art thou, great master of circumstances? Who are you? Goliath, before Zerubbabel. What circumstance? What denomination? What great thing can stand before this restoration of the word? Yes. Who are you? Who do you think you are? Listen to the prophet. Thou shalt become as a flame. Yes. While this mountain will be removed. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, say the Lord. Move every mountain of obstacles. Brother, to those children that's walking in the Word, that, that's been a resting place for the Word of God today, there's no mountain can stand before you if you only realize who you are and what you're here for. Amen. Amen. Every mountain has got to move out of the Amen. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Who art that said, Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth a headstone. There are with shouting. Listen. Oh. Crying. Grave. 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 Unto. How many love that? Oh, brother. You don't realize how important it is. To receive the word of God in this hour that was brought to us today is to receive the mercy seat of God. Is to receive the grace of God. Huh? And when the great headstone comes forth, it'll be crying, Grace, 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 to all those that receive the word of God in this hour. Don't you love it? Amen. Amen. Now, what's that mean? That you in this hour, out here, denomination, wherever you are, that has not received and believed in the man that has brought back 
the covenant word to the bride in this hour. Remember, it was the covenant in that word. Huh? Amen. The two uh, tables of stone was the covenant of God. Amen. And the prophet Malachi 4 and 5 is to bring a unconditional covenant to the bride. Amen. Amen. He has predestinated you as a, as a seed a seedbed to receive the word. You've been pre you're a predestinated piece of earth Amen. to receive the word of God. The oh, of God. Yeah. oh, my Lord. Oh, and Lord. it's great. 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 See? Now the mercy seat over the word. Now, I'll make it real plain. If you, with all of your heart, receive the message and the messenger, you receive grace. Now the blood, now I'll show you something. You can't, you can't. If, it, if it's true, it'll, it'll just tell all the way. Is that right? You cannot separate the, uh, the, in this hour, see, look, the blood is in the Word. The blood cell is in the male seed. Amen. And the blood is in the Word. Amen. You can't turn down the Word and have any blood. No. Because uh, when you turn down the Word, you turn down the blood. Right? right? Amen. Now, when you receive the Word, you receive the blood. How many say that? Yeah. Yeah. The blood is in the Word. Now, when you receive the Word, you receive the blood. And when you receive the blood, you got mercy. Amen. No, no, no Word, no blood. No blood, no mercy. The little brother said, did you make it? No mercy, no mercy. Don't believe the message. No mercy, no mercy. That's right. There's only one way that you can have grace for the capstone baptism of the Holy Ghost today, and that is to receive the messenger and the message. Of course, denominations can't receive it. It's only to the believer. It's only to the royal bride of Christ she will receive it, because she's the only one that's going to go into resurrection. Oh, and I could just go on with that. Maybe continue on tonight. Without the rest and the word and the blood. All friends. Not to you. Not no good work that you do. Have you heard? Have you had ears to hear what the Spirit has said? Now remember, all those in Pentecost was living under another covenant. See, they wasn't under the bride's covenant. I'll show you. Just one little scripture I'll show you the word. The Bible said in Ephesians 1, those whom he justified, he sanctified. Those whom he sanctified, he hath already glorified. Now, that didn't apply to Pentecost because they were justified and then they were sanctified, but then they came up and rejected the word. Amen. Now they ain't got no blood. Amen. Now they go in there and say, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Please the blood, brother, get on the blood. You ain't got no blood to please. Amen. Now, in my talk, I'm just going little brother taking his Bible 25 years. Plead the blood, brother. You ain't got a bit to plead. You turn down in the side. The anointed one. The yeah. prophet of God. You turn down the word that has the blood that would have given you grace. You turn it down. And now you're a comic father. But oh, look on the other side. I ain't got nothing to do with that. The royal bride of Christ has received the word, the blood. And then those that be justified... He has already sanctified and already glorified. Amen. You're just as good as that the marriage of the Lamb right now. Amen. How thankful Amen. we ought to be. Amen. How thankful. You know what we ought to be? We ought to have a shout in the camp that would rain her down to the North Dane Church here. I called it Great Dane a few Sundays ago. I was preaching away and got excited and I was trying to think of what was the name of that. I knew it sounded like a dog, Great uh, Notre Dame, and I said Great Dane. <laughs> Everybody laughed at him, and then I got down and realized what it said. I said, Well, I didn't make no mistake. I said, What it is? It's the biggest dog around. <laughs> you know how big a great thing is? <laughs> yeah. oh. They're the dogs that's spoken of by old Peter. Old dumb dogs that can't bark, sleepy. The prophet Isaiah and Peter quoted that. Yes. Dumb dogs that can't bark. But oh my, I'm so thankful, friends. You know how we should never be discouraged. 
to think of what a shout in the camp we really had because you know where it's why doesn't he press it? I, I'll tell you, I, something's still going on. I've never seen nothing like it like been in the last six months. I'm at home, but Lord, I just say anything about this song. This comes right in the room and fills it up. Oh, I got home the other day and oh, Shirley was on cloud nine. He just filled every room of my house. Praise. Just because that she was happened to think a thought about the uh, Bible. Praise. I go along the car by myself and I just think it's very comfortable. I've never seen nothing like it. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is ready to come to that word covenant that's given to the brother. Oh. Brother and sister, you can't afford to miss that. Oh. It'll surpass what happened at Pentecost. It'll it totally eclipse what happened at Pentecost. It'll be so great that finally that, that little bride will receive baptism after baptism after baptism. I remember when Brother Herman was praying about coming up here. That time we had this little door here with just the symbol on this side. A whistle card working and everybody's the war out and with painting there and brother Herman said talking about how he wanted the baptism of the Holy Ghost power for service to bad. And I and I just stopped painting, I put my hand upon show and I said, Brother Herman, you believe me when I say this. I said, You will not only receive a baptism, but you'll receive a baptism after baptism after baptism. And then he got a touch of baptism right there. Oh hallelujah. Lord came down and bore witness to what it's saying. We've never forgot it. So we ought to have a shout in the camp because the Ark Covenant is here among us today. It is returned. And who is that poor blind person that says there's no revival for the bride? I challenge that statement. It's unvalid and it's of the wicked one. The greatest revival that's ever struck the world is raised to strike that seed word that's relevant. I'm arresting place. Put her head bowed and her eyes closed. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, the Lord gave us that little song that was saying, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Could every one of us say, Yes, Lord? Can I say really, yes, Lord? To everything that he expects of me to say, Yes, Lord. You don't have a brother. Let's don't look down at her feet. You may have trials at home. You may have trials on your job. You may have trials with your loved one. But Jesus said, except you love father and mother, more, if you love father and mother more than me, sister, brother, whoever it is, you're not worth it. Except you take up your cross and follow after me, you cannot be my disciple. Could we say to everything that's mother and father, sister, brother, whatever it is that's holding us back, houses, lands, are lost, jobs, Brother Brandon said, I know that you're hungry and thirst for what I'm talking about. He said, but you wives, you let your husband keep you away from it. And then your husband, you let your wives keep you away from it. What's keeping us away from this glory of God settling down over that word? How, how would you like to have all that glory that comes down over the Ark Covenant, Solomon's Temple, that fills all that temple? Just think that's going to fill all your temple, brother. From your head to your toes. And you'll be a walking epistle, known and read of all men with signs and wonders and miracles. You do the very work that Jesus Christ done. You'll impart eternal life to the believer. Brother Brown said, Oh, blind thou to see, you can't see the greater works of Christ. What is the greater works of Christ? To impart the token to the believer. Would not be wonderful to go along, little brother, to find up with a message that believes with all his heart. He just cries unto the Lord day and night and loves his Bible and misses the tape. And then you walk by there and impart that to, token to him. You tell me that ain't a joy. You tell me that wouldn't be a joy. What is the greater works of Christ? To impart the baptism of the Holy Ghost to those that believe the message. I say this and I say it again. Follow a false prophet, you receive a false experience. Follow the true prophet of God. You will receive the true baptism of the Holy Ghost. How many this morning that everything, you just want to be a prisoner to the Word. You want to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever it is, you just want to say, yes, Lord. Friend, there ain't much time left. You see, listen, this earth is supposed to be burning. It's supposed to be burning by 77. you got to subtract three and a half years from that. That leaves 73. We're almost moving into 70. Oh, can we wake up and realize that the end of the world is here?
may not be weeks later, months, or if there ever was a time to say yes, Lord. Oh, Let us say yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we did our best to stay with the unadulterated word of God this morning. We preach hard on holiness, Lord. But, oh, God, we only do these things because you compel us to do it. Yes. For, Lord, the devil has creeped in, Lord, when you least expect it. Oh, Father God, how we pray that we might say yes, Lord. Lord, I pray for my little sisters, Lord. Oh, Father God, if there's a one here whose dresses are, are not becoming, is not modest, Lord, when they look in the mirror of God's word, uh, make conviction strike their heart, they might say, yes, Lord. Oh, Father God, that they could cover their knees at least, Lord, with that material. God, let them say, yes, Lord. Lord, it's just a little thing. Lord, I've seen good uh, women, nice women, that couldn't stand to give up lipstick and turn down the kingdom of God. I, I can't understand it, Lord. I've seen some, Lord, that just couldn't stand to keep wearing real tight dresses and they gave up the kingdom of God and went out back into the world. And I've seen some, Lord, that couldn't give up smoking. Little, little petty things. Oh, God, how can we compare eternal life, eternity to live with Jesus Christ, perfect joy, perfect happiness, perfect peace in a world across the river? Oh, God, how could people do it? Oh, Father God, may each one of us, Lord, may the men here this morning, may they be real fathers of their home. God, it's terrible to be here on earth and then not fulfill the cause that we're here. Oh, Jesus, this is the only life that we have to live for you, Lord. Don't let the days and the weeks pass by and fail you, Father. I pray for every father of every home here. God, let the daddy be put back the head of the house. Lord, let them talk to their wives in love, Lord, that's not in subjection to them. Oh, God, how a curse it is to a woman. It's not in subjection to her husband. It's a curse. My God, you said that they should be in obedience to the husband all the days of their life. Oh, Father, I pray for every husband here that he may in love for his wives because you said love your wives as Christ loved the church. God made them become the head of their house. But Lord Jesus, may we not let our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers sidetrack us from pressing on into this last stage of the journey into the great Canaan's land where we'll eat the great grapes of promise and have rest for our souls. Father God, we're looking under thee for the great capstone token of the baptism of the Holy Ghost to strike every true believer, Father. Dear Lord, let our hearts not be discouraged. Help us to be encouraged for the ark word of God, the covenant to the royal bride of Christ has come into the camp. How we ought to have a shout ringing, Lord, with the top of our voice. Dear Father God, I pray for everyone that's here this morning. I love them, Lord. I wish that I had something more that I could do for them, Father. But Lord, I'm preaching your word. I'm trusting in you, Jesus. Day by day as I wait upon you, Lord, into the night, I'm waiting on you, Lord. To come and back up, Lord, you were. Oh, Father. Oh, God of heaven. Come, Lord. Make this old world ashamed of itself. Make these old dead churches and backslidden people ashamed that they've not accepted the invitation to the very supper of the Lamb. Oh, Father God, make empty vessels, Lord. Be emptied out that you may fill them up, Lord. Oh, God, that out of our bellies be flow yeah. rivers of good water. Let the blind would see and the lame would walk. Father God, help each one to fall in love with Jesus. We praise you and thank you for the prophet of God. We thank you for the Ark of the Covenant that's arrived back for his final revival and his final resting place. Now, Father, we commit this morning, we commit this message unto you. Help us to grow in grace. Help us to walk in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You love him. He's all you need. He's a friend to get closer than a brother. Let's sing, I love him. You love him. If you love him, it's because he first loved you. Because you were an enemy. While Christ, while you were an enemy, Christ died for you. Is that right? That, that's really love. You'd maybe die for a friend, but you wouldn't die for an enemy, would you? You were an enemy, but Jesus said he loved you. How we ought to do everything we can. No matter who it hurts. I would rather hurt a friend than hurt Jesus. I don't know how people can sit and watch television and later on I can hurt Jesus. But not do those little petty things. They're petty to me. But all, you know, to me, the greatest thing I know is just for him to pass by one time. 
Just to feel his presence one time it means more. That 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 to me, that they, there's no LSD, there's no 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 kind of dope, alcohol, or nothing that this world nothing can, can do that to satisfy you like his presence. Come and say amen. Amen. And just, amen. would you like to walk in his presence all the time? Oh, yeah. That you could always feel the awareness of the Holy Spirit. I believe we could do that if we had lined up with his word. Keep the word of God. Anybody ought to know that when New York City blacked out and El Paso, Texas blacked out and other cities blacked out, that was a spiritual sign. It was a spiritual sign. It was the angels of God that cut the Jews. Amen. Amen. They've never found out what done them. They don't know. But we know it was the investigating angels that cut the Jews. They shorted out the thing. How many say amen? Amen. The investigating amen. angels are here, and they are just waiting and ready. Those deaf angels are just waiting now to do these things. They're ready to thank California. They're ready to pour out these things. See, that's their job. They want to do that because of the wickedness here. Now they're going to scream and run by the millions into these churches, and they're going to think that's a great revival. And see, they don't know it, but they're running right into hell. 
They're running right into the clutches of death and hell. Amen. But well, what about the little bride? Do you see that it's 69 and Brother Branham said that 77 would usher in the millennium? That don't even give you, if you even you stay here during the tribulation, it don't even give you much over seven, seven years. <laughs> now you've got to subtract three and one half years from that. So the most you've got is just a couple years, maybe not that much. I don't want to be here in 1974 because there's three and a half years of great tribulation and Jesus is going to be back on the earth by 77 which will be the millennium. Friend, if we're not going to get ready now, if your family's not growing in grace, if you're not growing in grace, won't you please pinch your soul this morning? If you put it off this time, if you keep putting it off, be honest, it's not God's fault. Where will you be? I ask you, I beg of you this morning. Where are you going to be? Where is your children? I are people concerned about their children. I, so I go and rest. I carry around the burden that my children are left here on earth in the tribulation with no mommy or daddy and the sun don't shine and the moon don't shine and plagues are sweeping earth. And besides that, the Pope and his hierarchy are going through the land, cutting heads off, ripping women open, and, and every kind of wicked thing that they can think of. That the Bible said there'd never be a day like it. No, never was before, neither after. Then to many generations. It's so bad and horrible. And we can't get ready and get off. Oh, daddy. Daddy, if you ever get your family together, you better get it together now. This can't be done much longer. If you ever, husband and wife, ever grab one another's hand and went to the horn of the altar, you better do it now. How many say amen? Let us walk softly before the Lord because my heart feels that something has got to happen. And oh God, so he that's filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. So if we're going to walk in holiness in the fear of the Lord, we better walk now. If we ever walk softly, we better walk now. We ever brought our family together, we better bring it together now. And do what? Lord God, I'm doing everything I can. I apply the token, Lord. I apply the token by faith to every child of my family. Yes. Let's bow our heads. I ask Brother Paul Belmar to dismiss us in a word of prayer. Weigh these things out on your heart, that said to you. Let them anchor down deep and let it stick with you through the day. God bless you, brother.
Lord, give us opportunity to come back again. Grant it, Lord. And may see our brother. Yeah. Enjoy